Testing sound. Hello. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Uh, Hello. I'm sorry. There is no light in my community right now. So I'm doing my best to be with you. Welcome, everyone. How are you doing? This is a new English module. I am very excited to be with you. My name is Kalev Nunez. Um, it's definitely a big pleasure to be with you today. Um, let me hear about you. I see many people now connected and that's pretty good. Can you hear me well? Teacher, I am sorry. I have a problem in uh, the platform and I'm not, um, well, no sé si se puede hablar español, pero no me parece el nuevo curso. No problem, no problem. Okay, all the, thanks. thank you for the information and, and all the, um, all the technical problems that you have. Good evening. Hello, good evening, welcome. All the technical problems that you have, um, you can put it on the chat, on the um, WhatsApp chat. Uh, so the technical team will help you, okay? Okay, teacher, thanks. Tonight, I offer you my apologies. There is no light. The electricity went off here in my neighborhood. So I'm using all the resources possible to be in this class. So let me hear your, let me hear your perception. What is your expectation? What can I expect from you during this module? What is your goal? Tell me a little bit about you. Welcome first of all to the class intermediate module one. Can I hear any volunteers? Do we have any volunteers to get started? I guess everyone is shy the first day. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Nervous Sorry, season. teacher. My English is very, very bad. I am three die for die and learn English. Um, my problem is um, no expression English in bus. Um, um, ah, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, my. Um, uh, Expression, expression in English is a um, problem for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am sorry. Um, <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear you, Francisco. I know that you're very excited. You have many ideas in your head right now. Listen, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, we will help teacher. you, Francisco. We will help you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know that the first day is very difficult. Yes, um, I know it's difficult. In, uh, um, however, in, um, miedo a, a pronunciar. Sorry for speaking Spanish in the class. <laughs> I don't remember in, uh, the expression in English. I don't remember, okay. Okay, no okay. problem, no problem. Welcome, Francisco. Welcome, everyone, to your English session. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn. We're going to help you as much as possible. What do you need to do? Well, you need to participate. You need to talk to us. You need to use your English. Again, guys, you see I have no electricity. I'm kind of improvising right now because lights went off here in my neighborhood. So I'm sorry for that inconvenience. Tomorrow, hopefully, uh, you can see me better. Um, but let's get started with your opinions. Let me hear some of you. 
I know we have a lot, huh? we have a lot. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me leave it for volunteers. Let me leave it for volunteers because I don't want to choose because this is the first day. I'm, I can't, I can't push no one. Tell me about you. What's your expectation? What's your goal? What's your fear? What's the big problem? What's the biggest problem you have with the language? Francisco already told a little bit about him. What about you? Uh, my problem is uh, no remember to uh, how uh, expression in English, um, bear, um, etc. Um, I am three. Uh, remember, um, um, and my my is um, sorry, sorry. Mm -mm. Me cuesta recordar ciertas palabras. Sorry, no, no recuerdo muy bien. No problem, no problem. <laughs> Let's listen to a lady. What about, what about Miss Judith? Tios, Tios. Good evening, Miss. Welcome to the class. Tell us Good about evening, you. Good evening, teacher. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, my goals for this course is to learn how I express my ideas. Uh, feel comfortable talking with anybody, especially when somebody call me, because by phone is hard for me to understand the language. Yeah, in the in the on the on the phone is more difficult because yes. sometimes there there is background noise. There is yes. noise. There is there is noise of the wind. There is noise of the traffic. And, and sometimes it's more difficult. Yes, but, but, uh, but the accent, the people is so different for the, the culture, um, especially when they are uh, Indians, mm -hmm. or um, I know this is correct to say black people, it's correct, but it's offensive for them. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but the, the, the form that they speak is a uh, the, the word, and they don't open uh, their mouth. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to understand. Yeah, dark people, they don't use structures. So it's it's gonna be always difficult for you to yes. communicate with black people because they don't use structures. They mm -hmm. use slangs. Like, yes. like, like people in El Salvador, they put a lot of words together and we are the only ones who, who know that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's difficult, it's difficult, yeah. but not impossible, Judith. I'm very happy uh, to hear your English level. Nice. Thank you. Hope you participate. I hope you ask me questions. Count on me, count on me. Uh, I'm here for helping you, right? I'm here for you this Thank hour. You. <laughs> I want you not to hesitate not to hesitate. I want you to tell me, teacher, I have this question, teacher, what is the difference? Teacher, what's this, what's that, right? But we need to use our language. We need to use our English. The little that we know, we need to use it. And we need to have in mind not to depend on, on the Spanish language. Leave that option as the last resource because you are intermediate and you have to express yourself. Ingrid Arias, welcome to the class. Nice to meet you. Hello, teacher. Nice to meet you too. Um, my name is Ingrid Arias. I am 23 years old. I live in Ustulutan. Uh, I hope to learn more to the pronunciation of the words because one of my greatest difficulties is the pronunciation and uh, remember to remember the verbs in the past. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for the heads up. One of the biggest difficulties that you have is the pronunciation. Okay, definitely, uh, we will help you. I am very perfectionist. I need to let you know that. 
uh, I'm the kind of teachers that I'm gonna be correcting you all the time. And I expect from you to take notes of that mistake corrected, of that correction, and not make the mistake again. Improve your English. Get your English better. Speak correctly. Guys, it's another language. We are not going to learn it 100%. We might not know Spanish 100%. <laughs> so uh, the goal is to communicate well. All right? Another thing. Remember the uh, requirements that we have by your sponsor in Sephora? We need to have active listening, active participation, and cameras activated as well. Uh, please, you have to honor um, those requirements. Let me welcome also to someone else. Let me see a gentleman. What about Mr. Herson Elias? Hi, teacher. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Any expectation? What's your biggest fear? <clears throat> My position is to learn the other language, in this occasion, English. And my fear, uh, my difficult, is mm -hmm. I can't order my ideas. You can't uh, order your ideas. Yes. It's difficult for me, and I can't express uh, a correct form. OK, OK. Uh, you're talking about logic. Yes. Remember that you could have grammar, you can have pronunciation, but you have to have logic. And for you to have for you to have logic on your ideas, you have to have a good vocabulary. You have to learn new vocabulary on a daily basis. The more vocabulary you know, the better ways you will have to express your ideas, whether they are positive affirmations, negations, questions, etc. right? Now, Francisco Lemus is asking if um, I configure my microphone. Everybody can hear me well? Can you hear me well? Okay. Okay, so I think it's your internet connection, my friend. Um, sure, I have a question. Yes? Uh, I know correctly, um, for cierto, is be the uh, B uh, or be the way? It's by the way. By the way, I'm sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. okay, thanks. By the way, you're welcome. Somebody else, or I think it's time to get started. I'm going to um, share. I'm going to deactivate my camera. In the meantime, I'm going to uh, share with you or platform. And remember, the ones who have problems to access the platform, you have to report it on the WhatsApp chat. Okay? Remember, we have a technician over there. Inglés Corporativo has a big team, you know? It's a big logistic going on for your satisfaction. So I'm going to ask you. Let me see. I'm going to ask you to read for us the um, objective. What about Armando? Can you start, Armando, with today's objective? Can you read it for us? Nice to meet you, by the way. Activate your microphone, gentlemen, please. Okay, I think he has some issues. Can you hear me? Well, oh, listen, what did you? By the end of the class, you will be able to tell about your past using was, were, and various regular and irregular verbs. E G. I was born in Korea. I grew up in the United States. I moved here 10 years old. I didn't speak English. 
adicionally, you will be able to ask and, and ask a question in the past tense. This conversation English lesson will help you discuss your background in greater detail and get to know people. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Oscar. I appreciate it. So let's check. What is the objective tonight? You will be able to talk about past. Guys, see past. 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 And yes. you gotta use was yes. and where. All right. For the simple past, we have two ways. You can use the simple past of the bird to be was and where, or the negative wasn't or weren't. Or you can use action verbs. For example, for I example, I grew up. I grew up in the United States. Look, look, this is the example. I was born in Korea. Repeat, guys. I was born in Korea. I was born in Korea. Born. born. Repeat. Born. I grew up in the United States. Repeat, guys, everyone. I grew up in the United States. Grew up. I grew up in the United States. I grew up in the United States. I moved, moved. I moved here 10 years ago. I moved here 10 years ago. Yes, the simple pass of move is with the moved. I moved here moved. 10 years ago. So we're talking moved. about move. What is move? Move is when you go, you have to take your things, your family, your stuff from one location to a different location, right? Negatives. I didn't speak English. Ah, negative. <laughs> Remember the negatives. What is the negative of was? Wasn't. What is the negative of where? Where? What is the negative of grew up? Grew up. What is the negative of grew up? I wasn't. Ah, uh -uh, this is an action verb. Grew up. What is the negative of grew up? Didn't grow up. Correct. I didn't. Is the auxiliary didn't? Remember, remember, when you're talking about an action verb, you're not using was or where. You're not using the verb to be. No, you're using an action verb. So you use it in simple past for an affirmation. I grew up in the United States. And for a negation, you gotta use the auxiliary didn't. And the verb goes back to the present. Good mm -hmm. job, good job. Okay, I didn't speak English. Additionally, let's check now the class itself. This is the introduction. Let's all participate. Let's check here. Um, Past tense. Let's just watch this video and then we can discuss about it. Let me know if you Hi can everyone. hear well and everything. By the end of this class, you'll be able to talk about the past using regular and irregular verbs. Additionally, you'll be able to ask and answer questions in the past. For example, you'll be able to make the following expressions. I was born in Korea. I grew up in the United States. I moved here 10 years ago. I didn't speak English back then. Let me get started by presenting the structure. In our previous class, we discussed how to make positive and negative statements using the verb to be in the past. So we talked about the left side of this chart, as you can see there. And we also talked about making yes and no questions in the past. In today's lesson, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make sense of this whole thing together. And we're gonna try to use both 
ways of talking about the past with the verb to be and with other verbs such as move. And so we're going to focus on creating statements, either positive or negative, as you can see there. Uh, that's the one that I had given earlier. I moved here 10 years ago. And we're also going to talk about making negative statements in the past, such as I didn't speak English then. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to make questions in the past. And the whole goal here is to be able to use both ways of talking about the past, either with the verb to be, as you can see, is slightly different, and also using the auxiliary did. Let me get started by making sense of the statements that we see towards the right side of this chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the formula real fast. In order for us to make sentences in the past, particularly positive sentences in the past, we're going to have a subject. And then that is going to be followed by a verb, the verb in its past form. And then that is going to be followed by a complement. So if I write down the example that we see on the very top, um, which says, I moved here 10 years ago. Well, we can clearly see the subject is I. I'm going to go ahead and try to color that in green. Then we can see that the verb is moved. Notice that I had to change that to the past. For most verbs, we will simply add ed. That's what we call regular verbs. And for irregular verbs, um, then for those, you simply have to remember what they are. So for example, we have the verb teach. And then the past of that verb is taught. But I'll be talking about regular and irregular verbs in a different class. I also want to write down another quick example here. So I'm going to say, I took English classes for a year. And then once again, what I want you to notice is what happens at the bottom. I want you to notice that we have a subject, and I colored that in green and then we have some sort of verb and then that is going to be color in red and then the complement um, as you can see English classes for a year let me talk about making negative statements in the past now I'm gonna go ahead and write down the formula okay before we go to the negatives I want to reinforce the affirmatives Remember that in the affirmatives, we have to use the verb in its past form, okay? So that means that you have to have some knowledge about some verbs. Okay, what is important? The structure, of course. Subject, verb in simple past, and the complement. Okay, so I want you to tell me a little bit about that, right? If you moved, if you took a course, right? Something in the simple past. Can you give any example or can you chat one example using this structure? Hello. Prepare, prepare your example and tell me something in simple past using subject, the verb in simple past, and the complement. Hi, teacher. Go ahead. Okay. I ate my baseball yesterday. Okay. Very well, very well. So we're using the simple pass of eat. That's A. Thank you so much. Okay. Somebody else? That's correct example. That's a correct example. Okay, Kimberly Fuentes says, I needed. The pronunciation on that verb is gonna be with id, okay? I needed to practice. We're going to make a correction. I needed to practice more my English. Remember that English, okay, sure. it's a proper noun. 
So we're gonna put it with capital letter, okay? I needed to practice okay. more my English skills, let's say. Okay. All right, make the, make the corrections over there. Somebody else, please go ahead, say it or chat it. Say it or chat it now, please. Excellent, Salvador is participating. He says, I played, okay, pronunciation D on that one. Simple past. I played soccer yesterday. Yes. Remember, simple past is for an action that finished. The action is done. So that is totally correct. Now, Eliseo Flores says, I played soccer last weekend. All right, we have two soccer players right there. All right, they use play. Come on, come on, come on, somebody else. Go ahead. Speak it or chat it. Okay, thank you, Kimberly. Your verb will be sounding with the letter T, with the T sound at the end, cooked. We kind, we kind of omit the K sound when you say it in simple past. So we say cooked. I cooked in the morning. That's correct. Jennifer says drank. I drank coffee in the morning. All right. Actions that finished. You got it. You got it. Thank you for the ones who participated. Okay, let's go. We have someone else. Person says, I ate pizza yesterday at lunch. Yummy, yummy. Judith, I got on a scholarship to practice English. Again, remember English with capital letter because it's a proper noun. Okay, English. Francisco says, I cleaned my kitchen yesterday. And remember that I, it's a, well, it goes with capital letter as well. Thank you, guys. Thank then you for the examples. Let's go and move on. Let's go and move on. In red. And then I'm going to go ahead and write down the formula. The only difference, let me talk about making negative statements in the past now. Negatives. I'm going to go ahead and write down the formula. The only difference that you're going to see from a positive statement to a negative statement is that we're going to have an auxiliary. That auxiliary is didn't. Um, so um, I, and then this follows didn't. Okay, and then this follows the verb, and then whatever a compliment. I didn't speak English, and I'm going to say 10 years ago. So we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for a little bit. This follows didn't, and then it's going to follow the verb. Now, important here, I want you to notice that in this case, this verb, does not change to the past. Okay, so the verb in the negative statements will remain in the present tense. It will not change to the past. That's very important, and that's because this auxiliary verb causes this verb to not change to the past. I didn't speak English ten years ago. The last thing that I want to talk about in this class is how to form questions in the past. And particularly, we're going to focus on. OK, let's go with the negatives. Now, keep in mind the structure. Keep in mind the structure. Um, something important. The verb remains in simple present. And that's because this. All right. Don't forget the auxiliary. Don't forget the auxiliary. And it's important to put a complement, right? A time marker like yesterday, last week. Um, 10 minutes ago, five years ago, yeah, last December, etc. Okay, can you tell me, can you put an example about something negative? Can you prepare your examples now? You can say it or you can chat it. I prefer you can say it because I can correct your pronunciation also. So open your microphone, if you have it, say, excuse me, and provide your Sorry, example. Or you can chat your example. Excuse me, teacher. My sample is, I didn't drink juice in the morning. 
I didn't bring shoes in the morning. That's correct. You got it. Bring goes in simple present. Thank you. Next. Me, teacher. Go ahead. I didn't buy it when I could. I didn't buy it when I could. Ooh, you're mixing also a module verb. That's wonderful. Great job, sir. It's correct. Somebody else? I didn't study for my exam. For my exam. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't study. Uh huh. Try to put it together. Polish your pronunciation, your intonation. I didn't. I didn't study for the exam. <laughs> it happens for the exam. For the exam, yes. Francisco says I didn't eating. Uh oh, we need to make a correction there, guys. What is it? Who knows? Eat. Eat. Correct, because it's negative, right? You're using uh, an auxiliary didn't. So that makes the verb to go in its Sorry, base teacher. form. <laughs> no problem, Francisco. That's how we learn. That's how we learn. We're learning English, brother. Alejandro okay, okay. says, I didn't go to my home yesterday. Okay, I didn't go. Uh-oh. I didn't go. That's correct. Salvador. Go ahead, Salvador. I didn't read a book last week. I didn't read a book. Vamos ahí, link in the sounds. I didn't read a book last week. Huh. I need to do it this week. Huh? Good job. And good job also, Alejandra. Okay, Kimberly, go ahead. Okay, I didn't work yesterday. I didn't work yesterday. And work goes in its base form. That is correct. Thank you. Next. Sandra, go ahead. I didn't play soccer the last year. Okay, say, say, I didn't play soccer last year. Repeat. Last year. I didn't play soccer last year. Yes, last year. This is not year. necessary there. Somebody else? Okay. Sure. I didn't read my class English yesterday. I did it. I'm sorry. I did it. Begin class English <laughs> yesterday. Yes, I didn't begin. Yes, <laughs> begin. Right. My class English yesterday. Correct. Thank you. I didn't begin my English class. I didn't begin my English class yesterday. English class is yesterday. Eh, póngamela en el chat. Put it in the chat, Oscar. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Okay. Mm. Okay, in the meantime, we're gonna go to the um, continuation here. So this verb to not change to the past. I didn't speak English 10 years ago. The last thing that I wanna talk about in this class is how to form questions in the past. And particularly, we're gonna focus on forming questions using did. Let's try to make sense of that first question that you see there. When did you move to Los Angeles? Well, first of all, in order to form questions, sometimes we're going to have WH questions and sometimes we're going to have yes and no questions. And I'll explain the quick difference in a second. Whenever we have a WH question, I'm going to start with that first one there. What we do is we have a WH word, such as in this case is when. This follows the auxiliary did. This will follow a subject, and this follows the verb in the present. The verb does not change to the past. When did you move to Los Angeles? So again, very important. We're going to have some sort of WH word that follows auxiliary did, 
and then is going to follow the subject. After that, you'll see the verb in its present form. It does not change to the past. And finally, we'll include some sort of complement. And we follow the same pattern in the second question that you see there. With the only difference now is that we don't have a WH word, and that's because this is a yes or no question. So the yes or no question starts with did you and the verb in its present form take the complement is English classes in Argentina. There you go. Okay. It all depends on what kind of question you have. So WH words we mentioned that we want to elicit information from the person. In a yes or no question, we simply want to receive a response such as uh, yes or no. So the example on how to answer a yes or no question, then you'll see it there. Yes, I did or no, I didn't. That's how you create a short response for that kind of question. Okay. So now right here, we have two types of questions. We have WH were questions, which this is the structure for that. WH word plus did, did, not didn't anymore. In the negations, we use didn't. In the questions, we use did, okay? WH word plus did plus subject, plus verb, plus complement. At the end, we always put a question mark. When did you move to Los Angeles? Ah, okay. Move is the verb. And the WH word is when. Okay. Now, do you have any question about this one? Any doubt about the structure? Okay, no, no question, no questions. Okay, I have a question for you and you can and you can say it or you can chat it. Tell me, when did you start learning English? Do I have some chats? I, uh, I started to learn English six months ago. Very good answer, Eliseo. Good job. Thank you. What about the rest? I learned English in the school. Who was that, Michelle? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I understand your answer. Wait, wait, wait. I understand your response. But um, you're not like completely answering my question. Because when, right, it's about date. It's about, you know, something more specific at the end. Like um, also take into consideration the verb in the question. When did you start studying English? So you could say I started when I was in what? Kindergarten? No, school. Or high school? High school, yeah. High school. See, see, that's more specific. Okay, thank you. All right, my pleasure. Um, let me make another question. I'm going to use, let me see, a different one. Okay. Where did you, where did you grow up? Where? Where? Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Comasagua. Comasagua? Yeah. Wow, that's a famous place nowadays. Yes. 
Thank you, Eliseo. Well answered. Next, please. Where did you Where did you grow up? Um, no sé si estoy seguro. Grow up in San Jacinto, San Salvador, in March. Tau house in twenty twenty one. Excellent. <laughs> I like Sorry. information. I love information. I love details. Well answered, sir. Somebody siento, else? Todavía tengo miedo. <laughs> no worries, little by little. Somebody else? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Mexicano City. No kidding. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Wonderful. Well answered, lady. Well answered. Thank you. Judith. Okay, next. I grew up in Santa Ana. I love it all my life. <clears throat> okay, Noe, right? Yes. Okay, did you say did you say you grew up in Santa Ana? Grew up. You grew you grew up. Grew up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the last question. The last question. Who were you? Okay, the, the question, the WH word is who. Who did you? No, wait, 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 it's time, it's time, it's time to continue. Let's go with these questions. These are information questions, the ones which is practice, and these are just no question. What is the difference? This is, this is only yes or no, right? And you start with the auxiliary did. Did you, did you take did you take English classes in Argentina? Um, here I'm Information missing the, from um, the person. question mark right here, okay? Um, did you take English? See, the verb still goes in simple present because you're using the auxiliary did. Okay? Now it's your turn. I want you to create questions using information or just no question. You're going to ask the teacher questions, WH word questions in simple past or just no questions in simple past. Practice your questions now, chat it or say it. Remember, you're asking me, you're asking me the questions. Coach. Yes, sir. Did you go to the beach last weekend? <laughs> Actually, yes, I did. I went to um, San Blas Beach with some of my cousins. Okay, that's good. Excellent question, sir. Somebody else? Teacher. Yes. When I uh, when I found out they like the English. Can you repeat, please? <laughs> uh, when he found out uh, the like English. I or... need you to I need you to chat the question, okay, Francisco? Chat uh, the sorry. question, and I will help you with pronunciation. Alejandra says, "Where did you study English?" Alejandra, remember, remember two things. I'm sorry for being so perfectionist, <laughs> but where uh, with capital letter, okay? In English, again with capital letter because it's a proper noun, okay? It's a proper noun, just like Jose, just like Carlos, okay? So to your question, Alejandra, I studied English at different places, to be honest with you, but, but mainly at CCSA. I don't know if you heard about that. CCSA, I just studied English there like about, let me see, in um, 2001, if I'm not mistaken. 
Francisco, when he found out he like English, casi la tenés estructurada, pero tenés que seguir la fórmula, Francisco. Te voy a dar una oportunidad Sorry. ahí. No, Sorry. no, no, está bien, sigue la fórmula. Ahí ya tienes, you have the WH word, te falta el did, ese verbo tiene que ir en presente y el complemento también en presente, ¿ok? Otra vez, English with capital letter. Ok, sorry. Somebody else, make me a question. Did you pay your electricity bill? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I did pay my electricity bill, but the, um, the service, it's been a little irregular since the storms yesterday. So I think it's because of that. But uh, we already reported the issue. So thank you for the question. I promise <laughs> tomorrow we should be back on track. Somebody else? Teacher, I don't know if it is correct, but how long have you been working at English Corporation? <laughs> is that correct? It's totally correct, Jose. What happens is that that's out of the subject. It's a correct question, but that is a present perfect question. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, uh, but I can answer it. Uh -huh, I can okay. answer it. Uh -huh. I have been working for Inglés Corporativo for, for many years. Um, maybe since um, 2016 when it started. Where did ah. you where did you learn uh, where did you learn to speak English that way? Wait, Francisco. Wait, wait, wait. What's your name? No, no. Jose. Hey, Jose. Jose. Uh -huh. Where second. did you learn? Where give me one second. Give me, give me one second. I just want to correct this question. Give me, give me one moment. Uh, did you start? at Yo lo que le quería preguntar en inglés era cuando descubrió que le gusta el inglés, pero creo que me equivoco también escribiendo. Sí, es que yo te entiendo tu idea. <risa> Tienes sí. la idea muy bien, lo único que te falta es seguir la estructura. Sigue la estructura, acá está la fórmula. Síguela. Síguela que tienes una muy buena idea en la pregunta. Vamos, otra vez. Ahora sí, José, go ahead, repeat your question. Uh, where did you start? Where did you learn to speak English that way? I learned to speak English this way in the most uh, beautiful country, El Salvador, <laughs> because I have worked in different places and I have been dealing with different kind of um, jobs, you know, and, and tasks that they have uh, made my English to be native. So it is not, the conclusion is that it is not really necessary for you to travel or for you to live in the United States for you to be able to speak as a native speaker with a good uh, pronunciation and fluency. So if I did it, you can also do it. Okay. And Thank you, teacher. My big pleasure, sir. My big pleasure. Alejandra, to answer your question, it says, when did you start at Inglés Corporativo? Uh, I started at Inglés Corporativo back in 2016. I'm one of the oldest teachers here. <laughs> Okay, somebody else has a question for me. This is getting interesting. Kimberly, remember Kimberly, uh, you need to use capital letter. Don't forget your capital letter. Call me perfectionist. Yes, the chocolate is very perfectionist, but <laughs> it's important. Remember, if you're going to uh, send an email, you know, something related to a job, it's very important, the grammar and the capitalization. So where, where did you learn? Where did you learn the English? Vamos a escribirlo sin el de. 
Let me check again. Where did you learn English? Like that. Where did you learn English? Let me chat it because too, ma too many commercials. I learned. Uh, Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your participation. We're gonna have fun with this class for sure. In a yes or no question, we simply want to receive a response such as uh, yes or no. So the example on how to answer a yes or no question, then you'll see it there. Yes, I did, or no, I did. And that's how you create a short response for that kind of question. The last thing that I would like for you to do is to answer some questions, which I will post in one moment. But before that, what I would like for you to understand is that we can form the past tense by either using was or where, or by using other verbs that are not the verb to be. So whenever you are going to use another verb that is not the verb to be, then we're going to think about the structure towards the right. It's important not to get confused. And so therefore, I would like for you to answer the following questions. As you can see, sometimes I will use did, and sometimes I will use the verb to be. Okay, look at those questions. These are questions with the verb to be in simple past, was or where, 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 yeah, where, where you born. Teacher, but the sound is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Where were you born? Now, this is a question with WH word. I can ask a just no question. Were you born in Buenos Aires? Just to get a, a yes or no, right? And when did you move this is this is something we already saw these are the two questions we already saw so i want to practice these questions that we got over there uh, at the bottom where did you go to middle school um when did you first study english when did your first first the first experience that you have try to remember uh, just no question. Did you have a pet when you were a child? How would you answer that? Get ready. Get your answers ready. Okay. And who was your hero when you were a child? No, Prepare your answers. I'm going to select random students. I'm going to select random students in two minutes. Okay, very well. Let me take a picture of this real quick. All right. You got it, right? I'm going to stop sharing. All right, all right, very well. So let me hear, let me hear this very interesting information. I would like to know where did you go to middle school or, or any of the questions? I mean, 
you don't have to answer all of them, right? But you can answer one of them, the best one, your favorite question. And tell us a little bit. Maybe we have curiosity. <laughs> Let's listen to Alejandra Lopez. Go ahead, miss. Repeat again, please. Did you see the questions? The first question. Okay. Where did you go to middle school? Um, I was a study middle school, Liceo Cristiano, Reverendo Juan Bueno. Okay. I have to make a correction there, Alejandra. Where did you study? Where did you study? Study, Alejandra, is an action verb, okay? Study. So here, you don't need was or where. What you need is studied in the simple past. Do you know what is the simple past of study? Studied. I studied at, yes? Can you repeat? Miss Lopez? Do you Sorry. understand? Do you understand? Um is I I study. Uh-huh. I, I studied, studied at Liceo Cristiano. Correct, correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, it's very important. It's very important you understand the question. If you don't understand the question, ask for repetition. Excuse me, can you repeat the question? That way you distinguish if you're using was or where, or if we use in an action verb, yeah? Let me hear to Salvador Bernal. Did you have a pet when you were a child, Salvador? No. I, I don't, I don't have. I didn't have. No, I didn't. I didn't have one. Repeat. No, I didn't have one. Correct. Thank you, sir. Pay attention to that correction because don't is for the simple present. Didn't is for simple past. When it comes about negative. Let's go with Armando. Let me see. No, Armando already participated. Let me go with... Um, Iris Hernandez. Iris, who Hi. was your hero when you were a child? Repeat the game. Who was your hero when you were a child? Uh, I know you say hero, the teacher. Hero. How do you say hero, guys? Like hero. Super like Superman. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was the hero in my shop with the princess. Can you repeat? I was my hero is the shot with the princess. Okay. My hero was. My hero was with the princess. The princess. Yes. My hero. My was. hero was a princess. A princess. Okay, okay. Like in the like in the cartoons, right? Yeah. All right. What about you? Let me listen to wait. It's almost time. Yeah, we have to go. We have to finish the class. But tomorrow we will continue for sure. We will continue with this topic. It's pretty interesting. As a homework. As a homework, please prepare your answers for these four questions. Where did you go to middle school? 
when did you first study English? Did you have a pet when you were a child? And who was your hero when you were a child? Tomorrow, in the first 15 minutes, we're going to have a conversation using this information. Do you understand? Yes? No? Maybe? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you for your attention. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye bye. bye, bye. Good night. Bye. Mañana bye, llorar bye. todos nosotros. <laughs> <laughs> Study. Practice makes perfect. See you tomorrow. Bye bye, teacher. Thanks for today. Thank for you, teacher. Time. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. See ya.